So today NVIDIA Labs finally released Imaginaire. Um, I've been sitting on this page for probably months at a time, hitting refresh every day, um, trying to get to see when they were going to release this. They said it was going to happen in early September. It's now September 28th, but hey, uh, better late than never. Um, so what's Imaginaire? So Imaginaire is uh, NVIDIA's sort of package of all of their image translation models and video translation models. Um, so if you've ever used pix to pix or um, Unit or vid to vid um, NVIDIA has now packaged up all of the, these tools into one library. And what's really great about that is now it's one install, and then you can use, it looks like, what, uh, nine different models? Um, and it seems like this will probably be where they begin to put all of their image-to-image -image stuff going forward. So some really, really interesting um, concepts here. I think you know it's really cool to just sort of see that this is how they're moving forward. It's really helpful because I tried to install uh, vid to vid like last week. Um, and it is was pretty out of date in terms of like dependencies and things. So it looks like what they've also done is they've gone ahead and upgraded all these to sort of the latest and greatest uh, like versions of either TensorFlow or PyTorch or um, on the latest version of CUDA, like those sort of things. So they also sort of brought everything up, up to date, which is very nice and um, means it will be much easier to play with. Um, so I thought I'd just walk through really quickly like what models are here. Um, so you'll see this sort of broken up into supervised image to image translation unsupervised image to image translation and video to video. So many people probably uh, played with Pixtapix -pix before, um, it being one of the more popular models. So uh, NVIDIA in 2018 released uh, Pixtapix -pix HD, which just allows for a higher resolution modeling. Um, they also released Spade, I guess, in 2019. And Spade is sort of, um, it's also been referred to as Gauguin, uh, the idea of using segmentation maps, being able to paint uh, using colors and getting uh, better outputs. Um, so those are the two supervised models, and that's sort of, you know, you've got an A folder, you've got a B folder, and you imagine them like really overlapped, onion skin style, um, those sort of ideas. They have a whole repo here of unsupervised image to image, and unsupervised is sort of CycleGAN. Um, so these are sort of their examples of CycleGAN. Unit is um, probably what CycleGAN was, or maybe their version of it. Uh, it's 2017, so it's pretty old at this point, um, but it's worth maybe playing around with. So this is... Um, like sort of a deterministic output. So you, like, like CycleGAN, you feed it an A image and it always spits out the exact same B image if the A is always the same. Whereas Munit allows you for multimodal uh, image generation, that's what the M stands for. You feed it one image and then you feed a little bit of noise and it can change um, the output. So this might be dog to cat, uh, whereas Unit would previously give you, always give you the same cat. Um, in Munit, you'll get different cats. So pretty interesting. Um, they've also been on this sort of what, what's called few shot, uh, which means you have less data and less sampling data, and it's able to generate um, better, higher resolution uh, translations. So Funit was uh, sort of the model they released last year, um, which again, less trained data, being able to generate new things. Um, I believe what they call sort of like directed, which means you can feed it a sample image and it can sort of direct from there. Uh, and then this year they actually released Coco Funit, which I thought Coco was going to stand for the Coco data set, but apparently it stands for content conditioned. Um, this was a, a paper they released at ECCV 2020 um, and actually hadn't released the, the GitHub code until today. So this is now out and available to play with. So I'll probably be doing a demo on how that works uh, in the near future. So keep an eye out for that. Um, and then lastly, they have a section of video to video translation um, materials. So vid to vid was sort of the, the, the post cursor to pix to pix. Um, I'm excited to try to figure out how, now that I can actually install it, I'm excited to try to figure out how to do uh, next screen prediction using vid to vid. Um, and then there's a few shot version. And then this year they released what's called world consistency um, vid to vid. Um, so again, this one has never been released before. So people will probably be playing with this and figure out some cool things to do with it. So uh, this is a short video just to announce that, hey, this is out. Um, I think it'll be really exciting. I'm certainly going to do some demos and uh, tutorials on how to use it. Um, but it's a really nice upgrade from NVIDIA and shows that they're sort of still interested in making things production um, ready for folks. Uh, there's a video, the promo video out that seems to be, seems to imply they're going to push this on schools, which I'm kind of interested to see um, how that goes. But I'll post a link to that video. Um, but just to say it's really cool, really interesting. Um, glad to see NVIDIA has sort of like not let a lot of their libraries bit rot, um, which was a concern of mine for a while. Um, but it looks like they've uh, taken steps to sort of uh, fix that. Um, and I think they're going to upgrade this and add some new things in the future. So um, if you do start to play with this and you run into issues or you just want to let me know that this is cool, this isn't, um, drop me a line and uh, I'll see you next time. Thanks.